if you clicked on this video, it's probably because you looked at the title and have no idea what it's talking about. What is an Ars Memorativa? And why is it in my anime chess game? I decided to make a video about this when I realized Fire Emblem Engage featured a memory loss plot. Ars Memorativa is a technique used to promote memory and improve recall that was invented... Well, no one knows when it was invented. We know Aristotle wrote about it often, but some scholars trace it back way earlier, and the concepts exist in many other cultures. So we'll just give the Greeks credit for this one, like we do everything, and move on for now. Essentially, Ars Memorativa is about creating architectural connections that allow for the recall of certain memories. One of the earliest stories about it features Simonides of Sios. Simonides was hired to recite an ode at a nobleman's banquet. He started the ode by giving thanks to the gods before his host, as was the custom of the time. But the host was angry at this and gave him half of his pay and told him to get the rest from the gods, which honestly is kind of based. As is common in Greek stories, the gods got mad and collapsed the building on the host and his guests, which honestly is also kind of based. Here's the kicker. The bodies were so disfigured that they could not be identified by their family. Simonides, because he remembered the layout where everyone was sitting from his earlier speech, was the only one who could ID them. Allegedly, he then wrote the basic ideas behind Ars Memorativa. Hopefully, that makes it clear what we're talking about. Ars Memorativa, or memory art, has always been about using striking visual images to recall facts. A student practicing memory art in Roman schools would be encouraged to walk through large buildings, memorizing the layout and dividing the building into several loci. The student would then attach certain images or ideas to each part of the building. When the student wanted to remember the idea, they would walk through the building in their mind, remembering the concepts in order when they entered each loci. It's a type of mnemonic device you might have used in school, similar to Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, except since this uses visuals, it can be used to memorize complicated charts, artistic concepts, and other ideas where words are less useful. It's also one of the reasons why large universities are built to be visually striking, or why teachers decorate their classroom, because those visuals help you remember. Now, what does this have to do with Fire Emblem Engage? Well, as you know, the game features a memory loss plot. Elier has no memory of his past, and in order to reclaim it, he must collect 12 rings that each correspond to a different character from his past. This is a simple evolution of Ars Memorativa, and one that has been used in almost all writing featuring memory loss. When we read stories about memory loss, characters very rarely follow the rules of realistic memory loss. They don't have dementia or Alzheimer's or any other form of memory loss that actually exists in the world. Instead, they take rules from the Ars Memorativa, that memories can be recalled when that person makes contact with specific striking imagery, and use those rules to tell the story. In this case, rather than loci being a location, the loci for Allier's memory are a set of engraved rings. We know Allier's memories are linked to the rings because Marth specifically says, He was able to answer your call because you remembered me. Based on Ars Memorativa, we can make certain assumptions about the story, which I will list from the most basic to the most complex. Point number one. The rings are loci that store memory of Allier's past relationships. We know this because Marth talks about knowing Allier in the past. That means that the Marth we are seeing is not the character from the end of Mystery of the Emblem, but rather a version of Marth who has met and fought with Allier in the past. He could even be a representation of Allier's memory, or the concept that Allier is supposed to remember when he puts on the ring. In the trailer, Marth tells Allier they were kind. If the ring is a loci, and Marth is a concept to be remembered, then maybe this ring is supposed to help Allier remember his kindness or a time he was kind. Point number two. The rings MUST be collected in order. Ars Nemorativa stresses that unless the loci are walked through in order, the associated concepts will not be remembered correctly. This rule is sometimes applied loosely in media. For example, in Breath of the Wild, Link can get most of his memories back in any order, but the final memory can only be obtained after all the others are gained. 
For narrative reasons, it's also difficult to tell a story about someone regaining their memories in an incorrect order. So we can assume that Marth will be first and Byleth will be last, as the Twelve Rings must be gained in order. I also think it's possible that Byleth will be last because we saw Evil Allier and some sort of dark future at the end of the trailer, and Byleth is the one with time travel powers. So that kind of fits together too. Point three. Though Ars Memorativa is often used to recall memories, it was originally taught as a method of invention. Aristotle used it to make new discoveries from memory, as did St. Thomas Aquinas. And this makes a lot of sense for the narrative structure of Engage as well, since Elier will likely need to take some knowledge from his memories and apply it in a new way to be successful in his mission. It is possible that some part of his memory, once retained, will contradict how he wants to see himself. As many have pointed out, Allier's dual color scheme hints to him being potentially both a hero and a villain. I believe part of his memories will make that clearer and force him to make a decision on what kind of person he wants to be. Point number four. Though Ars Memorativa is often conducted through real architectural places, many writers have implied that it can be conducted through imaginary locations as well. Somniel, the base camp in Engage, roughly means of or relating to sleep or dreams. I hypothesize that Somniel is a location for Allier to regain his memories that is both real and imaginary, thus combining both types of architectural links. We see most conversations with emblems taking place within Somniel, so if the emblems are some kind of embodied fragments of Allier's memory, this explains why they are only able to permanently appear here, in a place that is within Allier's mind in some way. Point number five. If Marth and the good emblems are fragments of Allier's memory, it makes sense that their evil versions we see summoned at the end of the latest trailer are as well. While good emblems take from the tradition of Ard Memorativa reliant on meditation of a place, I think these evil versions link into the Simodius story from earlier, in which part of the power of the memory comes from the traumatic deaths of all of the dinner guests. At the end of the trailer, we get the line, Who do you care about I very much doubt that happens in the game's timeline, but maybe it does occur in a memory. Perhaps the villains wish to defeat Allier by forcing him to remember traumas he can't possibly overcome, which would turn him into the evil Allier we see at the end of the trailer. Point number six. As with anything relating to memory, repetition of the idea over and over again can reinforce it. In the case of Ars Memorativa, this is obtained by repeatedly walking the same path. While on my last point, I theorize that everyone dies in the past, it is also possible that this game has a bad ending, like FE3 and 6 do. In that case, perhaps the key to unlocking the good ending is by having Allier and his allies repeatedly summon Marth and the other emblems, building supports with them over the course of the game. This fits into this repetition idea and creates a reasonable method to avoid the bad ending. And that's all the speculation I have. I hope you enjoyed the video, it was really interesting to make, and I'd love to hear your thoughts and theories, as well as your own theories in the comments below. You can also subscribe to see more analysis of Fire Emblem Engage. It might take a minute, because I'm going to be a little caught up with Scarlet and Violet for a second, but I'll be right back to making Fire Emblem content soon, don't you worry.